I quick want to talk about this, right? Because this is something that isn't really to do with the Agassino Zynga show. I normally keep the sort of topics for the random show, which is my premier random show episode, podcast stream thing that I do. Um, mostly centered around, you know, talking about comedians and shit and talking about other news, random news topics. But I thought this related to some of the things I speak about because it involves paying your friends. And I think I've said before on this stream or on this podcast or on other platforms that I'm a big stickler for paying your friends. I think, especially in the scene that I'm in, the art, design, fashion type of scene, whatever it may be, I'm sure some of you guys that aren't in that scene will know what I'm talking about anyway. When you have a friend in your group that has a skill, whether it's carpentry, upholstery, um, plumbing, electrician, sometimes you can take them for granted by always tapping into them because they know what they're talking about right they know what how to fix a problem oh my my sink is full my carpet's fucked up like they can always sort you out but i think just because your friend has a skill has a knowledge base doesn't mean you should take advantage of them you should always pay them now maybe as a friend you don't need to pay the fucking market rate but i i agree with exchanging legit cash and actual substantial cash maybe it's not imagine if your friend you know charges a thousand pounds to fucking paint a room maybe maybe you can give them 500 maybe 450 but don't try and give them 50 pounds or 100 or pay them back in beers or a dinner no 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 give them money for their time treat them like a friend obviously respect their flipping work but treat but give respect sorry respect their skill respect their knowledge respect the time that they learn to learn that thing whatever it may be but give them flipping money i don't agree with this whole like friend oh you're my friend do this thing for free help me out no 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 no, no. i've got a skill that i get paid for this is part of this is my job this is stuff that puts food on my this is this is what puts um, food on my plate this is what keeps my family warm and shit this is what pays my car note this is what allows me to go on a holiday allows me to spend money doing the things that i'm doing don't disrespect it by just giving me crappy flipping fees but in general, I think this is also extends to comedians as well and DJs and whenever I do my thing. I remember when I was DJing or when I was playing, putting on parties, sorry, when I was putting on parties and promoting, especially. Um, and again, I don't take all the credit for it. Big up Miles, who I used to do a party with as well, so special at Yellowby. Me and Miles were always very adamant about paying people. So we do these raves in a bar basement bar in Dawson called Yalabai and the, and basically the premise around there is that I don't know if it's the same way in other places but essentially what they would do is that at the Yalabai if you did a party there they'd say to you hey you could do a party here for free you can have it be free entry but if it's free entry it means that you can only take money from the bar after we make a thousand at, at the till and once you make a thousand at the till you can then take um 10 percent of that so if you make if they make two thousand, you'll make two hundred, and so on and so forth. So it was always quite nerve wracking, right? When you put on a night because you were quickly checking, you'd go and ask somebody at the, at the till at the bar who you kind of were friendly with because usually they wouldn't tell you. So you have to make friends with somebody, and then they they let you know, hey Ag, you're nine fifty now, you're nine seventy two. Do you know what I mean they kind of let you know where I want, and you sound to get happy because then you cover your fees. So a lot of people that were putting on nights at Yellowby because it wasn't that profitable, right? It's a free entry bar. It's only open until three. People only arrive there at eleven. So you don't really have a lot of time to really make money at the bar anyway. Um, you wouldn't, people wouldn't really pay their DJs because there's not really a lot of money there. After you've paid for the flyer design, maybe printing up, maybe burning more CDs, there's just not enough money left. But me and Miles were very adamant. No, 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 it doesn't matter. Whatever money we make, we're going to make sure we pay our DJs and just make sure we break even. So what we would do is that we'd basically just pay like 50 pounds for like a quote unquote opener and then 100 for the main DJ, which is still a lot of money because again, you're not making a lot. On a good night, I think one of our best times we ever did a party at the Alibi, the, the bar made like six grand or something, right? Which is like 600. But again, at that time, we also booked, you know, two legit headliners who wanted 200 or something each or something. When you minus them and then you take out the opener, it's hardly anything left for us. So you always had to kind of balance that. But I still liked... I still really enjoyed booking my friends to DJ and then paying them 50 pounds. Like it was so nice the feeling of like getting your friend to play because most of the times in the scene, they were used to just playing for free. So they just assumed that you were, play you were playing for free. And then to hand them some money and see them light up, it's like, oh, like, you know what I mean? Like you're kind of respecting them and you're taking them seriously. You're treating them like a professional. That might be the first time they ever got paid legitimately. And I think I've always said as well, I, I kind of, ad I adhere to, I forgot the guy, what his name is, but this guy's got this book where it's called like, um, 
I think it's called uh, prof- I think it's called Act Like a Pro or Write Like a Pro. I forgot his name, what his name is exactly. If I get it, I'll try and put it up on the screen. But basically, what he says in this book is basically like you can call yourself a professional the moment somebody pays you for what you do. So even if it's like a nominal fee, even if it's like a dollar, uh, five pounds, it doesn't matter. It's, as long as somebody pays you for your skill, then you become a professional. So I liked, you know, that feeling of basically making my friends professionals by giving them money to pay at this fucking shitty club gig somewhere. All that to say, today I learned something fucking wild. So on this podcast called The Regs, featuring Robert Kelly, Dan Soda, Lucia Gomez and Joe List, a recent episode just came out, episode 12, they were talking about a theatre comic, a legit theatre comic, who happens to only pay their openers $100. Yes, you heard that. A theatre comic, which basically means a stand-up comedian that plays at level of theatres, which is like, you know, anywhere from 1,000 capacity up, right, is paying their openers, people who perform before they perform, $100, even though this theatre comic, most likely on a weekend, because if you do theatres, you do you usually do a weekend, that's two shows, most likely over those two shows, they're probably making $400,000, you know, obviously before fees and shit let's let's cut that down and say two hundred thousand dollars after fees after agent after whatever and they're only paying the openers one hundred dollars this to me is utterly disgusting and goes to show just how scummy most people are when it comes to their friends or whatever if they can get away with paying people the less they will get away with it but it also shows to me how cowardly these comedians are Because they all took a big game about being free speech bastions, about saying the uncomfortable truth, blah, 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 blah. And they've got somebody in their community who is a theatre comic, who allegedly is Theo Vaughn, by the way. Allegedly, they're talking about Theo Vaughn. Allegedly, they're talking about Theo Vaughn. Is paying people $100 only when he's making $200,000 at the weekend. And again, not including what he probably makes on his podcast. Forget all that stuff. I know it's his own money, but still, that's pretty disgusting pretty disgusting so let's li- listen to these guys talk about it because this was this was wild when i first heard about it absolutely wild ever kicked me back anything i had the same thing ever not, i'm here like not a dollar but 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 i'm hearing some stories on the road about some major headliners name names can i say new role new role have to name names it's have gonna to name start names. shit with people i don't care yeah you do you i do- don't care I don't. I don't. Care. I don't care either. Go. I do care. I don't because whisper to me. You didn't say corporate it. Dan. No. Don't. Then put this feed on a regular regs feed. Woo! Oh, is that Whoa. it? Done. Whoa. Wow. Done. So you wow. can check our audio now, on the regs few. feed. There's no, a few. You can't do that. <laughs> Listen, don't confuse these fucking people. <laughs> All right, just just tell us I how just, big. How big? Yeah, are, are, are we talking initials? Are we talking clubs, theaters, or arenas? theaters? Theaters. Okay. If you're playing theaters and you're theaters, not back your guy, hundred dollars a show to the opener. Theaters. No, no. hundred dollars no. a show to. Wow. And this ain't this ain't when you started in the sixties. Name names. In the what? I don't want to name in names, Lewis. Don't name names. Mouth it to me. No. Yeah. No. You, why am I? Why don't I want to say it? You know, this you can go ahead and say it. it's a rumor, though. That's why I don't want to say it. Because also, the rumor. person that told me open. Are we friends with this person? No. The person I wish. Uh, the person that told me this <laughs> opens for them. By the way, I'm surprised by that. By the way, again, these comedy guys, they act like they're friends. They act like they're all best buddies. But isn't it interesting that neither Robert Kelly, Dan Soda, Lucia Gomez, or Joe List would count Theo Vaughn as a friend? Even though they all kind of exist in the same sort of like social group, kinda, they don't really know each other. Isn't that interesting? Huh. There's a lot. That's that's why I think. And again, this is something that isn't new, but that's why I think there's probably way more hate within comedians than there is online. These guys like to make it seem like too lazy to try, podcast cringe, myself unique, comedy enforcement. Um, 10 minutes or short they like them they make it seem as if we're the ones that are like creating all the drama and stuff in the division but i actually think amongst them there's a lot of hate there's a lot of like dislike of each other actually if you think about it really and truly because imagine this being a thing that they're talking about behind the scenes and how pissed off it would make you feel if one because um, i'd imagine a lot of these openers are probably friends of theirs friends of theirs complaining like oh my god i've got this opportunity to perform it with theo allegedly and Theo only paid me $100 for this opening set. Obviously, it's a great opportunity, but $100 and he's making $200,000. That's flipping insane, right? 
So that must create a little bit of animosity between them because they're thinking, hold on, because they all know what each other makes, right? Comedians know there's, you know, which probably is one of the reasons why I've always laughed at the suggestion. I've always laughed whenever Brendan would, especially Brendan Shaw, would go out of his way to lie about ticket sales because I'd always think to myself, like, why are you lying about ticket sales? Why are you saying the show's almost sold out, all this nonsense? When the fans, like, I don't know about you, but if a comedian says online, oh, tickets are about to be sold out, even for a rave or party, or we're down to the last 100 tickets, the first thing I think of when I get those emails, oh, you're not selling enough tickets then. Because if you're selling tickets well, there's no time or rhyme or reason to con to co put together an email to get more people to buy. You're just trying to sell, you're just trying to make sure you can fulfill the tickets that you're already selling now and, and provide a, the show that needs to be provided. And I also felt when people say, oh, we're down to the last tickets, hurry up and buy them, especially someone like a Brendan, why are you saying that to the fans? Because everybody in the scene, in the industry, sorry, knows that you're not selling tickets. So it's not like you're fooling the fans and you're not fooling people behind the scenes because they know what I want because, you know, they all share agents, booking agents, they talk to bartenders, ticket guys, all this malarkey. So it's just an interesting thing just to analyze that like these guys legitimately behind the scenes i don't think are as friendly as they make it seem as like real hey this is green room talk and i don't want to blow that <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh yeah i know i know i know several you know several well yeah. you give some yeah give a name, 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 name. <laughs> not, I'm not. Hey, that was such a, what a little sewing circle Dude, we have yeah uh, no, i know all we, about it oh uh, i don't know can i say text you. can text i say you. Naming the name wouldn't be a bad thing because then they would change it. Is it a woman? Is I it, kind of agree with no, you. Wait can do that in private. I don't think that's cool, by the way. Naming the names just so they can change their behavior isn't cool. I actually think it's more offensive that Theo allegedly is getting away with paying his openers $100 when he's doing theaters. The fact that he's doing it is a bad thing. When he change, when he does eventually change it because people will shame him into changing it, cool. I actually think it's a bad thing that he's doing in the first place. It kind of shows who he is as a person more so than, oh, now you've told me I'm going to change it because you know deep down you're doing something wrong. You know if you're making 200000 in the weekend and you're giving your opener $200, you know you're doing something bad. I think, and again, there's two schools of thought here. One school of thought will tell you Theo's, Theo's platform, Theo's notoriety, Theo's celebrity is so big and the openers are so interchangeable, so disposable, that maybe you should take whatever's given to you just so you can get on that platform and, and blow from there, right? But I also don't think that's fair because a lot of openers that are performing are probably quite experienced. They've probably got a lot of mileage in. They've done a lot of sets. They've, done, they've been doing it for years anyway. It's not like they're new comics looking for an opportunity. They've probably been around for a while anyway. So they probably should be getting paid a decent salary just because of that, for their experience. Um, and then on top of it as well, it's just, wouldn't you want to have the best of the best put opening for you? Yes. To incentivize the best of the best to leave their own tours, to not do their own shows and play with you, you'd probably have to make it worth their while. Now, I would think just paying them their, their rate would probably be the best way to go about it. Forget what you make. Just pay them their rate. Whatever their rate is for theaters, you just pay that. Um, but if you did want to make it kind of fair, maybe 10% of what you overall take, maybe two grand per flipping opener is that really too much after 200 after you make 200,000 after fees and everything to pay a couple of openers two grand each out of 200,000 is that really that much to really give away I don't really think or not to pay them I don't really think so but again maybe the mathematics maybe the scene is different I don't really know but it just it does seem entire it does seem really crazily it does seem overly greedy especially when you consider how much money Theo makes from his pod. And again, that's no one's business. Don't count his pockets, I understand. But still, when you don't even have to rely on comedy like that, hoarding all that comedy money <laughs> when you're hiring people and only giving them $100 is wild. Now, I have heard people say that he allegedly is paying people's flights and accommodation. But from what I know, that's standard. Like if you book somebody to like, for me, if I, if I, if I'm a, if, if I go back to, if I go back to party promoting, and I book a DJ to come play. Like if I if I want to book Renee Wise, right? One of my favorite DJs out there. Big up Renee Wise. Um, he's got a flipping um EP out at the moment that I reckon you guys should flipping check out. Renee Wise is a fucking G, so big up fucking Renee Wise. But if I wanted to book Renee Wise at the moment, I'd have to pay his flights and his accommodation. That's just standard what you do, and you also pay the booking fee. So that's not really a reason. Oh, I'm paying his flights and accommodation. Yeah, cool, but still a hundred dollars is fucking garbage you might as well not pay me 
You might as well just let me come, pay my flights and accommodation, and then go from there type of thing. It's a bit lame. I don't know. Maybe I'm just reading too much into it. Let's continue. Dan, is it a woman man. or it's a man? But there's a woman too. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh. There's a couple. There's a couple. Oh, we can all buddy. text each other. Uh, you know, we don't got. Can I say this? Yeah. The reason we won't name names, and we might. I still may. It's, it's on the tip of my tongue. It may slide out at any given moment. Okay. No. <laughs> yeah. That motherfucker Dude, makes you, cash. Ola. I'm gonna tell you right now, and I'm just gonna tell you the theater, the Chicago theater the sits what? over four the theater. The Chicago theater. <laughs> Seats over 4,000 people, I think, well, around there. Let's do the math. So you're probably right. making, he's doing two sold out shows a night. 100 a ticket, 150 a ticket. Probably. Yeah. yeah. At least 70 At a least ticket. 80 a ticket. At least 80 a ticket. And you're making, that's $200,000 in a night. Per show. A night. I'd probably say 100000 a show. With everything said and done. And you're paying your opener. It's four. It's four hundred thousand dollars. If it's a hundred dollars a ticket, I cut it in half because there's got to be a hundred and fifty dollars VIP. Hey, you have to, you have to... Let's actually see. Let's actually go on Theo's. Let's see Theo Vaughn's vlog. Let's see if it is Theo. It's pretty really disappointing to be honest. I'm not gonna lie, but let's see, actually see Theo Vaughn's uh, shows, shoes. Let's see shows, not shoes. We don't care about his fucking shoes. Let's see what he. Let's see what what shows he's doing recently. So let's go on these tour and let's actually see this, right? Oh, he's coming to the UK in June. <gasps> oh my God, he's coming to the UK in June. Okay, we're going, we're going to CVO. When the 15th? Oh shit, this is really good. Okay, cool, I didn't know this. If he was coming to the UK in June, okay, cool. Great, 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 great. All right, let's, um, let's do, these are all theatres, right? S, these, are, these are all most arenas, these aren't theatres, these are arenas, aren't they? Let's do the, uh, uh, let's do that, let's do that one, wherever that place is. Let's do the event trim in Apollo. What is that called? The event trim Apollo. So let's see what this is saying. Let's let's see this. Let's do a London one, right? Let's make it easy because I'm in the UK right now. So let's do let's do London dates. So the event trim Apollo, right? Does it have capacity there? No. Let's let's do capacity. Let's do capacity of the event trim in Apollo, right? So the auditorium event trim in Apollo, which Three of ones allegedly doing is is um three hundred and three thousand six hundred fifty five fully seated. How much are the tickets for this thing? Let's buy tickets. Got ticket master. Make it easy. Let's see how much these tickets are at this place because this will kind of give us an understanding of how much this guy is scamming some of these flipping fellow comedian friends because this is flipping wild, right? So let's go for the tickets. The three of one return of the rot. Happening on Saturday, the fifteenth of June, twenty twenty-four, at the event Tim Apollo in London. Let's see how much these tickets are going for right now on the old place. So, oh my God, bro! God damn, one hundred twenty pounds minimum. Let's do one. I want to get one ticket. How much are they? So, a regular seat at, in the stalls at the front is like eight. Let's see, seventy-eight twenty-five. Let's let's call it. Let's call it. Because there's stores and what's it, what are these other seats here? Let's say the tickets are a hundred dollars. Let's say they're a hundred, right? Let's just make it a hundred pounds. Let's make it an an average of that shit, right? So <laughs> we've got one hundred times three thousand six hundred and fifty five. Allegedly, he's making in that weekend or that one show particularly three hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars. Right? Let's divide that by two and say that that's what he's paying in fees and taxes and shit. After that, he's still making a hundred and eighty-two thousand. To only take a hundred eighty-two thousand and give people a hundred dollars or hundred pounds is fucking insane. If you if you gave them like what? If you gave them one percent, which is a grand, that still be you still got a lot of money there left right like legitimately there's no need to be paying people a hundred dollars like you're making way too much money to do so and again for me forget how much money you're making like i said before when i was promoting parties it's not really about how much money you're making it's just about paying your friends and wanting people that you support and love especially if you're taking them on the road because i imagine if you're going on tour and you have people open for you you probably trust them they're probably your friends you probably like hanging around with them so why not put some money in their pockets and make them feel good about coming out with you and shit? I don't know, right? I don't know. Like, wh why wouldn't you want to do that? I get if they're just some random people and you don't know them and the venue's kind of shoving them down your throat or telling you you have to take them to be your opener. But if these people you're, you're actually booking yourself or whatever, help them out. Maybe even local comedians. doesn't matter who it is. Just help them flipping out and give them a little bit more than £100 because that's absolutely wild. Let's continue with the clip. 
to pay your you have to pay your fucking right. for the, the fee uh, for the theater. Uh, Everybody. That's a hundred that's four hundred that's a ha- almost a half a million. That is ridiculous. That's a show. That's ridiculous. A hundred dollars a show for an opener. I'm I'm gonna retroactively take all the money I give to Zach and Scott back. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. I don't need to give them anything. Yeah, dude, I'm gonna Venmo all my old openers. I don't have anything <laughs> to give. I'm gonna pay Danny more money for this weekend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Danny's Danny? sitting over there like Danny prompted us. He goes, You guys should bring up how much openers make. Max, did I send you your extra money for that week? So, wow, look how small Dan Soda's hands are. Does doesn't Dan Soda have hands that don't look like they're connected to his body? Oh, I'm bugging out. I'm gonna pay Danny more money for this weekend. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Danny's Danny? sitting over there like Danny prompt. Yeah, his hands look like they're on sticks, isn't it? <laughs> did us? He goes, you guys should bring up how much openers make. Max, did I send you your extra money for that week? So Joe, oh, right, no. to, to right, kind of argue you right your point, I think there still is a problem. We've also already yeah. had this conversation on the podcast, like pretty much word for word. I think. Yeah, have we? <laughs> Not this podcast. <laughs> I think so. No, when? Because I knew who you were talking about. Because Dan- yeah, but this is. Can, can I say something? No, he didn't. No, he didn't. This is. I never new. brought this up. He was talking I about. He was talking about ago. being shitty in green rooms. That's what you're confusing. Yeah, no, we weren't. We didn't say his name. Though. Oh, never mind. <laughs> and also, I learned this two weeks ago. So there's no way I talked about this. Because I work. No, he's with... confusing. Yeah. No. Thank you for ruining the fucking flow. Honorary Chris Scopo, flow runner in the fucking <laughs> Jesus corner. Christ, at least have a big butt when you do for it. For no reason. <laughs> <laughs> I I just, can, that's that's fucking nuts. That's nuts. That's and someone nuts. should say something to him. If I was friends with him, I probably would say something. The podcast money is fucking nuts. Yeah, you just like never mind that money. That money is great. Let, let, look, let, let's move on. We're not naming names. We should get a guest on the show. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> he's big. <laughs> Be a big get. <laughs> a huge get. Dude. I want to know who the girl is. That guy text probably me. makes a lot of money on text, the road. <laughs> text me the girl. I want to know the girl. Text me, Joe. I don't know, something about, again, I know I mentioned the podcast money, but it's something about the way they mentioned it. You know, I'm kind of sensing a bit of jealousy. <laughs> I don't know. Again, understandably so, like I said before, I think it legitimately is way more understandable that these guys will be jealous of each other than random people like us that just watch them online. That's why I find when these guys complain and cry about YouTubers making videos about them, it's like, bro, you're jealous of the next guy next to you because deep down, all these guys believe they're funnier than the other person anyway. Then when you hear somebody's getting paid an absorb an absorbent amount of you know an absurd amount in terms of a booking fee, it's gonna make you feel a bit crappy about yourself because you do exactly the same thing that they do. You also think you're better than them, and they're getting paid you know a hundred times more than you. So I think the hate mostly exists within their little group, but they'd like to kind of push it out to flipping randoms on the outside. But again, the podcast thing doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what Theo makes on his pod. He makes he can make a million of uh, per episode. It doesn't fucking matter. That's completely separate. The interesting and really sad thing is that for the shows themselves, for the shows themselves, take into account what he takes away roughly. Again, we're only doing roughly. It looks like per theater, he's making a minimum of £200, $200,000, right? $200,000 per minimum is what he's kind of averaging out. Maybe let's say 150 to 250 to be on a safe side of things. To take out of that, only a hundred dollars to pay each opener is absolutely insane and diabolical and the fact that none of them call it out and they're not willing to kind of name names or say it because they're afraid of you know burning relationships and stuff is kind of shitty and kind of crazy because essentially other comedians now are going to suffer off the back of it it's going to continue it'll be like one of those kind of open secrets no one's kind of no one's kind of no one's going to address and it obviously doesn't get to the root of the problem because i feel like most likely this is learned behavior most likely Theo has learned to do this because other people allegedly have probably done it to him as well. So this is probably a practice that happens quite often with comedians underpaying other comedians, which is absolutely wild when you consider they all have come from the mud. They all had to fucking bust down a sandwich, share flipping hotel rooms. They know the struggle. So to then book your friend or, or random, it doesn't matter who it is, and not even pay them for their time is absolutely insane legitimately insane but again i'm literally not surprised at all really really not surprised i've always got the feeling that these guys are a little bit greedy they hoard all the wealth anyway they don't really share it around which explains some of the beefs that they have and stuff it's not really about comedy and whatever it's about who can ever become more famous and catty and backstabby and stuff this explains quite a bit going on but if it is Theo, it's kind of disappointing because i'm a big fan of his i love his pod i love him as a person he seems like a cool good cool dude and to but to hear that he's doing to, to hear that he might be doing this 
it's kind of lame. I'm not going to lie. It's really, really lame. And I hope it isn't true. I hope it really isn't true. That'd be a big get. <laughs> That'd be a big get points. <laughs> we think we can pay big, $100 to be on the show. <laughs> big booking. And guess what? I don't think you'll see any of us on this podcast. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, wow. I can't wait I, to hear oh, the girl. Oh, oh yeah. Well, I got to go. Uh, uh, really? You know wild. the girl? Wild. Wild. Say the girl. It's a girl. She can't do anything to us. Allegedly, the girl, according to the comments, allegedly the girl is Nikki Glazer because I think they said Dan Soda dated her back in the day. I think Dan Soda might have dated Nikki Glazer. That's the rumor, or that's what maybe he admitted. So they're saying the girl maybe is Nikki Glazer. I don't really have an opinion on Nikki Glazer. I don't really listen to her. I remember her doing that really cringy song where that comedian died and being kind of embarrassed for her, but I don't really listen to her content or know much about her as a person. Um, but yeah, allegedly it's Nikki Glazer they're talking about. Joe. <laughs> Um, Did you text the group? Can I tell you? I don't even know who that is. <laughs> I don't even know who the fuck that is. You this is such me? a little sewing circle. Who guys. is it? He texted me and Dan. He didn't text. Well, me. I texted Dan and then you asked. What are you an asshole? Well, I didn't want to text the whole group. <laughs> no, but you're gonna say it. Oh, that's what I heard. Who is that? Do you know her? Yeah. I don't even know who that is. Dan knows her. Please the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I did. How do you fifth. how do you know her? I plead the fifth, dude. Let's just move on. Danny's right. We had this conversation. <laughs> we're we're bringing up old so there's shit. a few people, but in general, I think yes, it's much. So better. let me. Ask, I take care of my openers better than I was taken care of. I will. But say. you should. You, by a, like, a, damn. I hope Louis like doesn't see this. Hundred X. <laughs> Louis. Louis was great. Louis no, gave you guys roll. Louis. Louis. Louis didn't give me one. Well, there you go. Fucking... Anyway, um, just to end this. This also now explains why these guys were coming in their pants so hard when Rogan opened his comedy club and he started paying people. That was the first thing that came out of the comedy club, right? Oh, it's an amazing club, the mothership in flipping Austin. Oh my God, oh my God. But the other thing that people kept talking about and never stopped mentioning was the pay. And I was always like, what the fuck is wrong with these guys? Why do they keep mentioning the? Why is it such a big deal? But now we know why it's such a big deal because they all get shafted once like i think you have to that's why probably they're also desperate to get netflix specials and stuff because once you headline you kind of command a certain fee but when you're an opener and stuff a middle actor and stuff i think you kind of get shafted a lot by clubs by other comedians by booking agents like i remember there was a thread actually on the on the stand-up reddit i checked out i think i spoke about it on the pod where some guy allegedly was making people pay to perform in places imagine right the guy was making making people i think it was a promoter in new york he was making comedians perform pay to perform but then he was charging an entry fee at the club <laughs> can you imagine that he was double dipping he was making comedians pay him money to perform at his shows but then charging tickets for the shows and keeping all the money so i think that whole scene is very corrupt very dodgy um I, probably not dissimilar to the dj world like i've played in places where i've been promised money then you go to collect it and a promoter fucking vanishes into thin air or you send an invoice and it doesn't get paid. Like these things can happen sometimes, but I think it's funnier with comedians because they always talk about how much of a brotherhood it is and it's a fraternity, a fraternity, as fucking Brennan would say. They're all boys, they're all friends, they will help each other out, blah, blah, blah. But apart from appearing on each other's podcasts, when it comes to the money, when it comes to what matters, putting my bread on the table, they don't do that. And I think they have to give... Ari Shafir credit. Ari Shafir, I know, comes across like a piece of, piece of shit. He comes across like a bit of a cunt. But Ari Shafir, back in the day when he used to do his pod, I forgot what the name of it was exactly, but Ari Shafir's old podcast, he would pay guests when they came on. I remember one in particular, he paid this guy and he legitimately was like, yeah, I was I was down bad before I came on your pod. I didn't know you were going to pay me. And I think he gave him like $200 or something to come on, on his fucking podcast. So Ari Shafir is an absolute legend for doing that because he remembers his roots. He remembers how hard it was coming up, you know, um, and he'd get people on his podcast, um, this, what's it called, the Skeptic Tank, and he'd literally pay guests. He'd give them a hundred dollars or two hundred. I don't know. It's a nominal fee of like, here, thanks for coming on. I'm probably going to get some decent money from AdSense or from sponsors anyway. Here's a hundred dollars to kind of like, you know, pay for your Uber back, get yourself some dinner, whatever, man. And these comedians will be so happy because you know they literally would arrive to his podcast of zero in their pockets, but just looking for a chance to kind of you know take you know maybe perform and dance in front of a new audience. And here these are these big comedians performing places, not paying people. So this makes me feel better about myself. And what I used to do back in the day when I used to pay DJs at my little parties I used to do back in the day called So Special. And again, me and my friend Miles were very 
very you know we didn't agree on much back in the day we used to kind of bump heads quite often unfortunately but what we did actually always agree on was making sure we paid our djs 50 pounds even though we didn't make a lot of money sometimes we'd lose money we'd always pay people 50 pounds or 100 pounds to play an hour or two at whatever club night that we did and it felt nice i'm not gonna lie it felt fucking good to help your friends out to pay for to pay for their art pay for their skills and essentially help them along the way to becoming professional the funny thing is about that though you have to do it with an open heart without expecting anything back because a lot of those people <laughs> A lot of those people that we booked, <laughs> a lot of people that we booked, especially that I that I went out and kind of found, they never returned the favor. Like whenever it was their party, they never would book us to perform. Like, do you know what I mean? That's the only sad thing about the type of shit. Like people, like imagine if Rogan probably pays all these guys really well if they're going to road with him, but then he finds out that they're doing this to their own. I mean, that's the kind of sad thing about it. Like, they never kind of pay it forward, or they never pay it back. It's kind of like, yeah, you just give me something, I just take it, and I run. That's the kind of sad thing. But again, when you do stuff like that, I don't think you should do stuff like that waiting for somebody to give you something back or to have a pat on the back. You just do it for doing sake, you know? But again, what do I know? What do I know? What do I know?